Welcome back. David Hertel in for Aaron and Natasha. Well, we're going to stay in the healthcare universe, but uh, this time we'll talk about some good news for once. Uh, when I was a member of the National Assembly uh, for five years in uh, St. Michel, one of the great thrills I had all the time it was uh, being able to give the medal of the National Assembly to a deserving citizen who was involved in his or her community. And yesterday, a familiar voice on CJD uh, received that honor. Uh, you know her very well. Uh, she is Julie Kenville, president and CEO of the MUHC Foundation, and she joins us now. Julie, thank you very much for joining us, and congratulations. Hi, David. Thank you so much. Thanks for the invitation and uh, and for for the incredible support that, that you've given us. And uh, what what an incredible evening that was yesterday. I feel uh, even today, I feel incredibly emotional about it. So tell me more about that. How this is? How did did you learn about that? How did, how did all this come about? Right before my vacation, I received a call from my M and A, uh, Mosef Daraji, to uh, let me know that uh, that he had nominated me and that I had been accepted, and I was absolutely blown away. <laughs> and uh, and on top of that, to be invited to sign the Book of Kirkland. Uh, where I have lived most of my life, uh, it, the uh, the city has transformed uh, immensely since I first moved there when I was about eight years old. But um, it's incredibly emotional to celebrate these moments with the people who've been so close to me uh, throughout my life. Uh, well, uh, Julie, I understand this was awarded for your commitment to philanthropy, changing lives and medicine by investing in medical research. I mean, you're not done. I mean, <laughs> you're, this, you know, <laughs> no, this, this is I'm not a lifetime started. achievement award. That's it. So, <laughs> I mean, at this point, I mean, the recognition and, and the work you've been doing, you and your team at the MUHC Foundation has been huge. Uh, we hear about it with Tara Schwartz. You hosted uh, the show prior to Tara uh, on Sundays. Uh, it's it's amazing what you guys do over there. Tell me what's uh, what's happening right now at the MUHC Foundation. What are you working on? What are the priorities? What uh, recent accomplishments you could talk to us about? Well, first of all, David, there's a million things I still haven't done, so I'm <laughs> I'm just getting started. That's what I think. And, <laughs> um, you know, I'm 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 really lucky. I have the best job in the world. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm surrounded by the most incredible people day in and day out. Uh, researchers, physicians who are are coming up with cures to disease, and the the leaders in our community who are there to help them and to support them and want to invest in advancing medicine in our city right here in Montreal. Mm -hmm. And uh, so what we're working on now are, are a couple of really major transformative projects because, um, you know, as an academic hospital, the, the contribution that we have is really about advancing medicine. You know, that physicians in general um, apply and implement the medical books that they have learned. And, and our job is at the MUHC is to actually change those medical books. And the foundation's role in that is to fund the innovation portion of it, because a researcher actually can't even apply for a research grant until they have proven that the research already works. And, and how do they do that without funding? So we come in and we inject uh, seed funding and every dollar that the community puts in, because it's not us, it's the community's investment, um, gets leveraged for 4 to $20, uh, in, depending on the, on the project. So we're working on infectious and immune diseases and building uh, the first institute uh, for infection and immunity uh, with McGill University, a wonderful project. And we have a number of amazing projects in cancer and cardiovascular and respiratory. So it's very exciting. Uh, speaking with the president and CEO of the MUHC Foundation, Julie Kenviz. So, Julie, uh, I cannot have you on without talking about COVID and what's going on right now in the numbers. I'm wondering, you know, throughout the pandemic, we're in year three. Uh, the government just uh, gave us an update earlier this afternoon. Uh, things are not heading in the right direction. Uh, what is the foundation's role or what have you been doing with regards to the pandemic and, and COVID-19? Yeah, so the, the foundation, actually, the pandemic really proved the need for philanthropy, mm. uh, David. You know, if we kind of take a step back when the pandemic hit, um, we had already begun to invest in building this Institute for Infection and Immunity that I just mentioned. So we've made a commitment with McGill um, to invest each $60 million into building this. 
Mm. And the, the pandemic was the first test of what we had already started building. Mm. We had discovered that we had the largest consortium in the world of researchers in this area already right here in Montreal. And mm. we've started to bring them together and build research infrastructure for them. And so at the start of the pandemic, a number of incredible families in the city and, uh, and hundreds of donors contributed to be able to take what we'd already built as infrastructure and call upon the research community for immediate solutions. So we published our first call for solutions in March of 2020. The federal government didn't do that until months later. Hmm. And then we called for solutions to vaccine hesitancy, which we saw months before that came out. Uh, and, and what that really meant for Montrealers, because that's what we want to think about. What does that mean for patients? It means that absolutely every patient that came into the MUHC throughout the pandemic was offered one of the many medications that we believed could be efficient against COVID. If you came to another hospital, a community hospital without this infrastructure, you were offered you know, a ventilator and, and, and hope and prayers. Mm. Um, but there were a number of medications that Donald Trump named quite a few of them, as you recall, um, but because we had this infrastructure and we had the, the researchers, we were able to be one of the top recruiters of all patients for clinical trials in Canada, right here at mm. the MUHC. That's the difference, and that's why we need to have an academic hospital like this in our city. Part of your career, I know this, is you were in politics as well. Uh, <laughs> you, you, <laughs> you worked on Philippe Couillard's staff when he was health minister uh, i mean it's it's always interesting to get the perspective of someone that was in government uh how are we doing in terms of the healthcare system i don't want you to get political of course but i i want your eyes on this because you've been involved in different roles with the healthcare system for so long now. And we're seeing these numbers, we're seeing the healthcare system, especially in Quebec, we have the least number of beds per capita in, in, in the G7. Yep. We, we, we are, we have enormous tasks today. I mean, it's much, it's as much as about the, the virus as it is the fragility of our healthcare system. So I really would enjoy having your perspective on the situation and, and where we should be heading. And, and don't forget that we have one of the highest percentages of hospitalization of our seniors yes. as well. Yes, right. We saw uh, yeah, we send we send our seniors to the emergency room instead of developing senior care. Exactly, with, with a complete lack of home care. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what we're seeing today are some of the same themes that we saw when I was in government. Mm. Um, but but what has happened? And, and it's not one government. I'm not going to blame no, one. No, no, numerous no. governments. Have we'll had take this, all the blame. Don't worry. No, no. They okay. they all can take the blame. The, the number one problem in the healthcare industry right now is manpower. Mm. Um, we, we could open all of these beds. We could open more surgical time, um, but we don't have the manpower. So you take COVID, we have a situation where we have forced retirement of an entire layer of managers. Um, we've had a significant amount of retirements because of COVID. And every time there is another COVID wave, which we are facing right now, um, people have to isolate every time they are in contact or have COVID. And then we have vacations. <laughs> and so mm. the, the, the risk right now is the lack of people. Um, the foundation is now funding in a number of different sectors uh, scholarships to incite students to go into a variety of different healthcare trades. But we need to do so much more. Mm. And, uh, and we need to invest in healthcare. I hope, David, that what we have learned the most um, throughout this pandemic is that when our community is sick, Absolutely nothing else matters. And we need to invest in our health care. Yes, it is the number one expense in the Quebec government's budget. But it is so important to our ability to drive the economy and to protect our seniors and to protect our children. We have to invest strategically and we have to invest in, in more prevention um, in, uh, in order to prevent a lot of these diseases. What, what I predict and many people have predicted already is during the pandemic, we, we reduced, unfortunately, access to diagnostics, and we are already seeing much more advanced cancers, much more advanced cardiovascular disease. And so these are the big risks. We need to get people diagnosed early, treated early, so that it's much easier and we can send them back to their families and to their jobs. Julie Canville, thank you so much. Congratulations on the National Assembly Medal. Great uh, award. Uh, you totally deserve it. And uh, thank you for all your hard work. And please keep it up.
Thank you so much, David. Judy Canville is the president and CEO of the MUHC Foundation.